Hi guys and girls, today we'll talk about the new Power Velocity Next Gen controller. So this one is 5th uh, generation, oh no, 5th generation, now it's a next generation. However, it's the 5th iteration of the prototype. Um, we've made some uh, changes to the original prototype a few times, so I spent basically a year perfecting it. And um, we'll talk about some design of talk about some design choices we made with this controller features just some of them basic ones it has a lot of features now we'll not cover all of them um, and we will um, run the detection motor detection we'll see how easy it is uh, done and we'll run the we'll test the motor right basic test so anyway why we uh, made it the way it is I guess the biggest thing I would like to talk about is the design choices and as you can see these are there are two um, um, PCBs here uh, two boards one is the drive uh, stage uh, drive stage or, or power stage and the other one is the control board so what we did with the way we did it to provide better noise immunity for the um, control uh, circuit and the way we do this is also uh, using the isolation I mean power isolation power is is isolated from um, from the high voltage the power of the uh, power in the control board is also isolated from the power stage the other thing you will notice is that we are using uh, um, one layer of substrate aluminum substrate as the um, as the power stage board so it looks like this so the reason we use this is that it provides very good heat management for the MOSFETs and um, it allows us to mount it directly to this um, heatsink very good thermal interface the other thing is that it allows us to use the SMT uh, MOSFETs is like this. Uh, early on we decided against using any of these. They are very common for uh, um, e-bike controllers. Problem with these MOSFETs, uh, there are a couple problems. With it, but the biggest one is that even though it can be rated uh, officially at 100 plus amps, uh, the bottleneck uh, is these um, terminals. They will melt if you go past 70 amps or even will heat up. The other thing is that you need to create um, uh, electric uh, isolation uh, when you mount them here and uh, so that's additional uh, inconvenience and uh, just cumbersome and it doesn't provide a good heat uh, path from the uh, MOSFET to the uh, heat sink. Right. You can use something like this, it provides good kind of, these are cera ceramic uh, pads, but <clears throat> the, you know, ultimately this is way better and uh, it allows you to directly solder them here and the heat is directly transferred through the metal, through the solder to this um, PCB and to the heat sink almost like directly soldering the uh, MOSFET to the uh, heatsink. The other thing is that obviously it has more area uh, for current con conduction. So I, I, I guess if I can... Yep, here we go. Yeah, many more. It's like three, four times more. Just a couple times more. One, two, three, four, five, six, six versus one here maybe at least three times anyway so the other thing is is the one of the other most that we're using is that it provides much better area and it's directly solderable to the uh heat sink or to the pcb so the other thing is that power is isolated as i as i mentioned we use three uh we use three current sensors on each phase uh, this looks a little bit ugly but you know production version looks much better 
and we use full isolation from the power from the uh, control board. Uh, here you have also you can see um, Bluetooth integrated. So everything has been actually currently talking to the phone and showing the voltage and current and even weather. Um, anyway, so then it's also using a film capacitors that should really good for DC link filtering. It has some other features, so I'll just stop here. Uh, just too much to cover, maybe later, what other things it has. Um, so this is our test setup. We have two motors, it's QIS motors, cable of 20 kilowatt peak, um, but realistically can be used at 10 kilowatt, probably running continuously. So this motor is driving this motor and this motor is used as a load and here we have using wire to to load up the motor and uh, so you can realistically test it under the load so this is a um, battery capable of uh, outputting at 200 amps at 100 volts 24s configuration what else um, so i'll talk about oh actually we were, oh yeah we're running vesk tool for right now for debugging and other things great tool for debugging um, maybe a little bit overwhelming for non-technical people or people that haven't dealt with this before but it is really, really cool tool um, obviously the firmware is great and that's what it's running and um, uh, we also have a Bluetooth uh, configured here so we'll ultimately have the in the application it will be easy to configure everything uh, it can be done in VESC right here easy just with one two taps on the, on the screen um, Anyway, so what we'll do right now, we'll do the detection, uh, motor detection, and the way we're going to do is just do it through the VESC tool. Uh, so that we'll do this, we'll select inrunner, large inrunner, and uh, yeah, it has a warning here, so that make sure you select the right one, so it's uh, when it's testing, it's not pushing too much current, so it's not smoking, it will not smoke your motor you have to be careful and we'll, we'll handle this all in the app making sure that you don't do those mistakes costly mistakes so uh right now i'll set up doesn't matter but i'll set up uh, battery configuration i'll say this is a direct drive and i'll hit detection detect so we'll do three things i'll do a lot of things but three major things um, one of them being uh, detect resistance and uh, inductance, and that's what those clicks are doing. Oh yeah. So second thing it will do is it will measure the flux linkage, and that's an open loop. It's right running, and then finally it will do the hall sense detection, and that's what it's doing right now. Hall sense detection. Uh, one direction and the other direction. So now it knows the whole sequence. And it's done. Less than a minute. That's what it takes to set up a motor. After that you can go... Uh, right now it's basically using pretty safe uh, occurrence default. You don't burn it just accidentally and there's a huge variability in motors. So it's just uh, staying on the safe side. Finish and but you can go here and adjust the currents right now i'll just adjust this parameters 100 amps i don't want to run that high at this time right now but um so i'll just leave those default detected values it's ready to go basically so here's my throttle the motor and it runs well no stuttering no anything it runs uh fog uh, FOC, field oriented, stutter, very smooth, can't really tell this, uh, you really need to put it on the bike to really tell how smooth it is, but it's running really super really nice, uh, it's pretty violent, violent, all right, so it works, uh, the other thing is just one thing, oh, but I forgot to show this, uh, we probably need to reconnect, um, yeah. Sometimes it's doing that. Um, um, I'll just do this. 
yeah I just turned it off yeah it detected it here it is actually I'll show you something here as well those that use my controllers before then they're familiar with the application so it'll be over the air update update module can be updated firmware can be updated directly from the application easy and uh, and now so what I wanted to show is okay, oh. all right that's 150 not bad 150 but that just needs adjustment for the um, holes and the uh, motor configuration which I didn't do um, but I'll just show so no load current is around 4 amps and these are IPM motor, motors pretty efficient good motors and it's some a little bit of a load because it's pulling the other motor but it's not really using the actual load um, so this works well Okay, um, well that's pretty much all I wanted to show for right now. I'll, I'll post more videos and some uh, other topics specifically for um, different areas of the controller and what you can do, how to set it up. But that, that's, that's about it right now. Thank you.